Hi guys, Ren here and welcome to the workshop. Today this episode is going to be about dry train friction, one more of these. So this is a pretty standard rear mech that you find on bikes nowadays and uh, well this particular example, the Shimano version, doesn't really have any significant downsides in terms of friction. There are lots of popular upgrades nowadays uh, that we can do to reduce the friction in there and the chain articulation most often and I get asked about these an awful lot uh, how do they work how's the shifting how's the compatibility and what's the point and is it worth it so if you look at the standard Durace rear mech you can notice that it uses uh, 11 tooth pulley wheels which are really really quite small this means that the chain has to go through a really tight band when navigating through the mech. So that's the downside because that's um, actually the opposite of what you want. You want the band to be uh, and have an, as large of a radius as possible to reduce the friction because the tighter uh, the angle of the chain is, the more friction you get. So this is where oversized pulley wheels come in. And then there's another factor, which uh, obviously is just the part of the fact that these are rotating elements. So you want to have as little friction as possible in the bearings or whatever is used uh, to enable the pulley wheel to rotate. Now, since this is a high-end rear mech, it uses normal sealed bearings, but sealed in quite a little uh, sense of the matter because, yeah, there's a there's a lot of drag in it it's because it's a stock system is designed to last and be foolproof not for highest performance possible so obviously what you can do is remove the grease from out of here that's also going to help but I get asked also quite often why don't manufacturers spec uh, larger pulley wheels as standard well there are a couple of uh, reasons for that firstly because of cost and yeah, production expenses, these are, I think, in every single rear derail are made out of, out of plastic, which means uh, not too much stiffness, not too much, not, not too much precision in the manufacturing. And that means you only get precise shifting when you have a small diameter. Although, if you look at the latest crop of SRAM and Shimano mountain bike rear max, there the pulley size or the pulley wheel size increased significantly to around 13, 14 tooth, I think maybe even 15. But if you want a performance oriented aftermarket upgrade like this one, there are a couple of options now on the market. So let's start with the first one, most prevalent, most expensive, uh, and the one that started it all. This is the ceramic speed oversized pulley wheel system. Uh, there have been other units before, like the Burner, for example, but that one wasn't very popular and it also wasn't very radical, it just added two teeth, uh, if I remember correctly. This one though, the upper pulley, uh, 15, lower, a huge 19 tooth. Uh, why is that? The first generation of these used the same size um, pulley, so 17, 17, but to improve the shifting, I already talked about this, uh, they went down uh, on the diameter here. Why is that? Again, uh, the more leverage you have here, the more distance from the, from the pivot. Uh, if you put or increase the size uh, of the pulley here, you get less precision as the bearings can't be made with zero tolerance in the interface because then it just will rotate freely. So, what you need to know about this system, as I said, uh, it's probably the most expensive one. This one in particular because it uses ceramic speeds coated bearings. So they have an extremely hard uh, metallic surface on both races, apart from the very, very round and hard balls in there. Uh, this makes it last incredibly long. They actually offer a six year warranty, which I don't think anyone does for any cycling product particularly this is well it's a wear item if you if you think about it so that's pretty remarkable 
also the quality of the finish and the overall durability is is just unparalleled in my experience but that's also true when it comes to bottom brackets etc so uh, that's that's the offering from ceramic speed as for the construction it's made of cfrp so carbon fiber reinforced plastic um, and uses stainless steel hardware and machined aluminum wheels apart from their very special bearings uh, then a bit of a newer addition to the market is the Kogel Colossus which yeah if if you look at them you can't really miss uh, the similarities however the construction uh, is quite a bit different this one is designed I would say more in with more durability in mind when it comes to structural rigidity this CFRP thing if you crash it uh, might not survive this one is machined aluminum throughout so very stiff that also fares well for the shifting precision and yeah in terms of a crash i think or riding off road this one probably has a much better chance of survival uh, the same philosophy applies to to the bearings probably as you can see these don't rotate as freely that's because they use uh, tougher seals and more lubrication in there, more grease again for more protection from the elements and if you talk price wise it's a fair amount cheaper than the ceramic speed version and then finally i have one more example to show you from french company nova uh, i got this very recently and uh, it also looks to be quite an exciting product the price point of this is a whole lot cheaper than both the Ceramic Speed and the Kogel. But you can't really see any obvious downsides to it, or, or if I just look at it. Uh, it uses actual carbon fiber plates, although heavily cut out as you can see. So it might not be the stiffest unit, but it appears to be sturdy enough. Also it's the only one that sports full ceramic bearings so not just the balls but the races and well both races two that means the friction is incredibly low uh, how will that last over time well that's a tough question one you've yet to figure out as you can see for race day um, it's a very very good option with super low friction and one that won't break the bank so interesting proposition right there uh, apart from these oversized systems there are also aftermarket pulley wheels uh, that are the same size and just have upgraded bearings or more freely, freely rotating bearings for these uh, I think the savings are really really quite small so I don't um, I think that those will be the best option there were some comments and misconceptions uh, regarding these oversized ones uh, things like that ceramic bearings don't help and uh, stuff like that also that these are worse aerodynamically uh, I work with AeroCoach for my aero testing and they work with a lot of athletes including uh, for the 2021 season actually most world tour teams and uh, they have yet to find such results so i really wouldn't worry about that a rear mac is isn't exactly located in a very uh, exposed place on the bike and the airflow there is already very dirty obviously there's a rotating wheel right next to it so uh yeah i'm, I'm taking it as a net gain i don't really think about the aerodynamic disadvantages so that's about it also there are a couple of very cheap aftermarket options with ceramic bearings um, those might look cool but in my experience they don't really uh, function properly and uh, and they will definitely not last anywhere near uh, as long as a standard or or proper aftermarket unit so even though ebay is full of them I would just steer clear because yeah just like with everything you get what you pay for 
and I think in those cases really it will be just worse than the standard unit so I would advise against that. Okay so uh, this was a quick recap of reducing dry and friction and the possibilities to do that in the rear Mac. I hope you have found this informational and useful. Uh, it's all for today, thanks for watching and see you next time.